Hello, sorry I'm late. I was busy answering a question from Natalie and I was confused. Was I actually on Facebook Live or was I just getting ready to go on? So hello, welcome everyone. I'm Donna Barroso, as you can see from my fancy apron. I'm here today to answer your gardening questions. If you have any questions, just get them right here. Look at the bottom side of your, the right hand bottom side of your page. You will see, write a comment. You just have to say hello or hi, it's Donna, it's Valerie. Or Natalie, <clears throat> if I haven't lost you completely, I will answer your question live as we go. And so anyway, I'm Donna and this is Facebook Live and it's usually about a half an hour long. You are welcome to send in your questions. Love to hear from you. Love to answer your questions. This is my holding it upside down. This is my latest book. This is the Gardener's Gratitude Journal. If you've logged on to my webpage and I had six new likes just over the weekend for my web page if you do log on to my web page you will hear all about the gardener's gratitude journal you will also get a newsletter and i'm just working on that newsletter now I'll get my hair out of my way so i will be sending that out later this week so if you sign up now for my newsletter you will get it this week and actually i don't know what i'm saying on my newsletter and there's natalie hello she's here and you know that was confusing because we were talking and then i realized ooh, time to start so natalie has a question she wants to move her strawberries now now natalie lives on vancouver island unless i got that wrong that means she's in a warmer climate so things have not quite shut down yet they're shutting down leaves are starting to turn red you're not getting any new growth on strawberries and that's why i wouldn't move them now natalie if you move them now and then you get them in the wrong position where they're getting too wet or too dry and who knows over the winter what's going to happen usually too wet those strawberries are just going to rot so really it's better to wait and divide your strawberries pulling out the main clumps on Vancouver Island, usually that would happen in March or early April. So as they're just starting to show signs of growth. When I've had um, commercial quantities of strawberries sent to me, and they have been picked at this time of the year, but then stored in a cool room, a walk-in fridge usually, and kept dry without any moisture, without any anything, just cold. So unless you're willing to do that, you really shouldn't divide them now. They should be divided sort of late, later in the in the winter now if you're on the prairies the best time is sort of mid-march now i'm not laughing at the prairies i'm from the prairies i'm just saying that you don't want to do it too early because when you start to divide your strawberries they can start to really rapidly grow and at that time uh, and that's what you want because the faster they grow then the faster you're ready for that strawberry production which is going to happen i have a friend that's a strawberry grower in saskatchewan and he actually sometimes takes them indoors so that's not a joke either if uh, natalie is ready to pack some of hers up now and try to keep them dry in the fridge in a bag so humid and dry that could work and then you could pot them up really early or just be patient and just leave it up and i see sean has has joined us as well now if you can hear me let me know if you're having trouble hearing me i am trying this new microphone and i've heard from cbc that it sounds kind of tinny so let me know how it sounds to you because it's new i haven't used it very much and i just want to make sure that uh, that everyone can hear me so natalie i hope that covers your question about strawberries and my general question to gardeners today my general question is what are you doing this week it's suddenly gotten kind of warmer it was snowing on the prairies and it's gotten warmer now so you're taking this opportunity to go out and refinish um, maybe covering tender perennials maybe digging dahlias are you doing anything special in your garden this week and there's darlene hello darlene good to see you as well you are my friend from cranbrook and i love hearing from you now Nellie has just said thank you i wanted to prep the current bed for something else but i will wait yeah because that's a double job then uh natalie if you do decide to move your strawberries or prep that bed for something else you will have to wait the other thing is a lot of people want to they really want to um add manure in the fall and i've been guilty of that too it's not the best time to add it because especially if you're on the west coast you're going to get a lot of rain and that's going to just drain away a lot of the nutrients so it's okay to accept layers of manure from friends that have it and put it in your compost as long as your compost is well covered. Oh, and Kristen's here. And I 
Kristen and I are friends on, on Twitter, so that's really fun. Her spring bulbs are popping up like crazy in this weather. What kind of spring bulbs? What are you talking about, Kristen? I know I've got lots of a muscari, which is the um, grape hyacinth, and that's supposed to come up in the fall, and then they bloom in the spring, and that's why everyone on the prairies or everyone growing in anywhere that's the slightest bit colder climate, maybe northern BC, they actually sometimes get worried when they see that, but you're in a milder climate, Kristen. You're just off Vancouver, I think, so let me know what you're doing. Um, what kind of crazy bulbs have you got coming up right now? I think that's fun. Oh, Dutch irises. Ooh, that's not right. You know what? My my garlic's coming up now, and that's not right either. Uh, and you're saying, what's with me? Am I just a bad gardener? When I dug it this summer, I dug it a bit too late in one bed. Now, usually if you dig it just at the perfect time, the little heads are tight and they're not falling apart, but I had a whole group that I missed even though I made a video about that, I missed it. And then I got out there late to do it and the bulbs were already starting to separate. And when they do that, you'll see chunks of your garlic break apart. And now my garlic is up a good ooh, four inches, 10 centimeters to even 15 centimeters, so four to six inches up. I have found on the West Coast that that's okay. I'm not worrying about it. I've also found I can plant my garlic as late as... Really, I can plant it quite late. I've planted it as late as March or April, and it's still done fine. So we're a little bit more flexible out here. Okay, bulbs are popping up. Kristen said, um, oh, Kristen this week is shredding leaves for leaf mold. Have you got your own... Um, you got your own leaf shredder, Kristen? I had one that I was trying out and I loved it, but I found it, um, I just found it hard to use. I'm not that mechanical. And so even though I loved it because I could make my own bark chips and I loved it because I could shred up my leaves, I had to return it. So I don't have that anymore. That was a really amazing um, tool to have. So maybe you're just doing it with a lawnmower and that works too or maybe you've actually got um maybe you've actually got an actual chipper okay natalie i don't want to miss anyone's questions natalie has told me that she has garlic up bulbs processing leaves so that's what she's doing right now she's planting bulbs processing leaves i actually planted some alliums those are the ornamental onions i think i showed those a couple of weeks ago just this week i harvested my big squash that's interesting so we'll try to get to that later if we have time it's not all about me oh Kristen good she said she runs over her leaves with her lawnmower and that is simpler than having a wood chipper I just thought I would include all that stuff in one little motion by having a wood chipper but it was just too much work so that's a good idea if you've got a situation where you've got lots of leaves coming down now or maybe you had snow last week but this week it's melting and can get out there and rake up the leaves and I've also seen people put the leaves into a big garbage pail a big plastic garbage pail and just use a whippersnapper weed eater and whirling that around can chop them up into fine bits and then they're perfect to add to the compost not so good to add on the plant beds and I'll tell you why if you add those finely chopped up pieces onto the plant beds at least on the prairies they can get too compact they can just make like a tight mat too fast better to leave the luxurious big leaves and let them form their own um, cover on the bed they'll eventually get that natural microbial glue that sticks them together but they don't get too heavy if you grind them up and then add them on the beds I find that they can get too packed and it can keep the soil too wet too long so if you're grinding them up I don't know what Kristen's doing with hers she's running her lawnmower over and she's prepping her leaves and grinding them but maybe she's then just storing them in bags to use later in her compost I hope she gets back to me on that uh, then there's Sean. Sean says, hello, I have leaf hoppers on my apple trees. Oh no, because leaf hoppers have been a huge problem on the prairies, on the, um, I guess they've been on hops and they've been on, some of the really early ones have been on Virginia creeper. So I hope it's not the same leaf hopper that's on the Virginia creeper. Let me see you say, hello, I've had leaf hoppers on my apple trees. Should I avoid chopping these up for compost pile then? Uh, there have been other infestations as well. You know, do not worry about this. I read this a lot. If you are, I'd say no worries. People should not um, be worrying about that right now because I really think that, and what Sean's asking, just to recap, is can she add a plant 
that she knows has had a problem, an insect problem, can she shred it and add it to her compost? And I think that's what she's asking, yes. And the answer is yes. Maybe there's some really bad things like black knot. If you've got any kind of cherry or apple and you've got that black foamy um, fungus on it, you might find that that outweighs the good fungus in your in your compost bin. So maybe don't use that. Maybe separate that out as you're doing your composting. But most other insect problems and most diseases, frankly, you'll find it's a real soup in your in your compost pile and the better you can build your pile the hotter it can get the faster it works you're going to have more and more types of fungus in there as well as more and more types of bacteria i was once told i had a soil test done that i had trillions that's a big number i don't even know how big that number is i had tr trillions of bacteria in my soil and that was soil that i had been working with on my hugo culture and that was interesting but i think sean that um not to worry no worries, just um, usually those kinds of insects will be frozen in the winter. Leaf hoppers are probably not going to overwinter in your compost, especially if your compost pile gets hot enough in the spring. So go ahead and use those apple tree leaves and don't worry about it. It does say to me that there's something happening with your apple tree, though, and I have something happening with mine, too. I have a, an insect problem, and I know that that tree, which is probably 100 years old, has been growing just with the gravel it doesn't even have proper soil and it was in this house before i came so i know i've got to make a decision am i going to keep that apple tree am i going to try to renovate it am i going to try to change the soil these are all questions that we go through during the winter we think did i have an insect problem if i had a problem what was the problem and i have found just mixing a high phosphorus fertilizer about a special high phosphorus fertilizer that was mixed with water and sprayed onto some of my trees in some seasons is much better for the coddling moth and that was the problem i had this year so next year i'm gonna to have to write it down and make a better attempt at that because i just it's on the side of my house i don't really see it it's such an old tree uh, so i know that it's in stress i find when plants get in stress that is exactly exactly when we get insect problems so we have to just i mean this summer was hot so maybe you got it from that but i think um i would say to sean marie i'd say no worries um just uh, add the um, leaf hopper apple leaves to your compost. So I think that'll be just fine. Hey, look at that. I typed it and added it all at once. I'm getting to be, you know, kind of like multitasking. Not really the best thing. Um, okay. Hey, this is fantastic, by the way. It's uh, really fun to see all the people jumping right in. Okay, Natalie um, said she has a Floatron leaf shredder and that works great. So is that a special brand and it's just for leaves or can you also chop up vegetables? Because that's when I first got my wood chipper. I got that because I thought I wanted to grind up those really big broccoli stems that were so big. So I'm wondering what Natalie's doing with hers. Um, now, Sean also said she's planting her bulbs and her garlic soon. I was hoping to run the other leaves over with a lawnmower as well. Kristen says we store them in up until the next year in heavy duty plastic garbage bags. And that is perfect. Kristen is a gardener as well. I see she gives a lot of talks and she's out speaking. And I also see her a lot on Twitter. So it does, no surprise to me that she is doing just the right thing, which is grinding up her apple leaves and then storing them for use later. So by keeping them in the heavy duty plastic garbage bags, which are the really heavy duty ones that my husband doesn't like to share. He likes me to use the thin ones, which I don't like to use. So. So is that little struggle going on. But she has the hard, heavy-duty ones. I plant right into leaf mold for vegetables and flowers. Seeds come right up, and we even seem to have earthworms. I love that. Oh, Betty McRae is here. Betty McRae is helpful husband's sister. So thank you for joining us, Betty. You're all the way down in Kansas. That's pretty exciting. So Kristen, again, loves her leaf mold. I think that's really great so everyone should take their inspiration from Kristen she is getting out right now and she is collecting up those leaves and shredding them with her lawnmower but you can also shred them with as I said the leaf eater and also Natalie has the special Floatron leaf shredder you can do that now and then storing them away in heavy-duty garbage bags that is a great idea 
Okay, just for leaves. It's nice and light so I can manage it by myself. I like that Natalie is just using her Floatron for her leaves. Where did you get that, Natalie? That would be really interesting to find out because I think there'd be a lot of people that um, would like to get that. Did you just buy it online or does it take up a lot of space? Is it electric or is it gas operated? Um, that was the problem with mine. I tried to do too much with it. And so I was trying to grind it up and I had to have a hmm, helpful husband. That's Keith always out there monitoring me because I was either putting in something too big or too small. It was choking. And that was his word. I didn't know. I, the gas um, chipper didn't work for me, but I'm just wondering if Natalie's um, is actually an electric and where did you, and where did you get it Natalie? Because I'm certainly interested in that kind of thing. Just a lighter uh, scale that's not going to be so hard to use so you know I did have some other questions things that I wrote down people are still asking when they can prune the raspberries and remember there's those two types of raspberries there's the primacanes which that's a fancy word those are the ones I consider fairly new because they're only about 30 years old they are the ones that bloom in the fall so if you have fall blooming raspberries it's because they completely they completely died back over winter, the old stems, or even if they lived, they, they weren't the producers. So you can just mow them in the spring. So the primacanes, the newer types of raspberries, so if you're on a farm, you probably don't have primacanes. The newer types of raspberries that you actually have to buy, you can't just get from your friends, are the ones that bloom on new wood, but they bloom late. So if somebody said, I have a fall blooming a raspberry, that one you can cut down anytime. It makes no difference at all. Just go through with your mower, weed eater, doesn't matter. Chew it up, grind it up, throw it into your compost, whatever you want to do. Cut those raspberries down now. But if you have the older type, the floricane raspberries, the floricane raspberries are the ones that um, we normally grow and they bloom when well, one year the stem grows the next year it grows and they get little side stems and that's where the flowers come from so those typically bloom in starting july so they're sort of a summer blooming you'll get those early raspberries those are the floricanes and those ones you should wait to prune especially if you're in a harsh climate you should wait to prune them till spring because we never know what we're going to get with with winter kill so if you prune them now you might have to go in and prune again in the spring or if you're really a disciplined pruner and don't mind doing it twice you can trim back the raspberries uh, the ones that you know bloomed because they have the little side stems you can just cut those ones back now and in the spring you can thin out the new stems that are not side branching so that was a, a question that came in earlier and I see we've heard back from Natalie she, who said she just got her her uh, chipper for leaves at Home Depot and it's just an electric system it sits right on top of a big garbage can so that sounds pretty awesome I think I need to get something like that I know I've uh, you know I'm a gardener. There's always something I need to make it just perfect. So I think Natalie's on to something. She even gave me the, um, and everybody, she's given us the uh, shredder, um, the link. So we can go in and, and follow that. I'm not going to do that now because I might lose myself here on that. Okay, so that's really good information. And Sean's been doing the same thing. She's been shredding and using her leaves for a few seasons now, and it's fabulous, super easy and free. So if you're still one of those people that loads up your, you know, rakes up your leaves, puts them in bags and leaves them for the city to take away, no, or bring them somewhere else or give them away, you're going to have to stop giving them away. In fact, speaking of things that used to be given away, I used to get tons of free wood chips. I would hear a chipper going in the neighborhood and I would head in that direction and I would ask them to dump them at my house and I got so many wood chips over the years but in the last year I find that everybody else has caught on to this and they're all keeping their wood chips because it's a really good thing for your garden ground up leaves and ground up wood chips you just can never get enough of that and so I have to try a little harder so I'm happy to hear that um, everybody's on the, or at least everybody that's listening here today is on that leaf saving mode. That is such a great thing to do. We just have that short window. We have this month of October. If you can leave some of the leaves that haven't been ground right on your beds, though, that also really helps the ladybugs. I found them from talking to entomologists. They tell me so many of the ladybugs over winter in those loose leaves. So they don't like the tight leaves, the little friendly, finely shredded leaves. They like the loose leaves so that they can come and go easier, especially when they, they start to freeze. There's sometimes still gaps, pathways. So don't shred up everything. Leave a little bit to go from later. 
Okay, that, that's pretty exciting. So Natalie's is the electric system and Sean Marie's been shredding. She doesn't tell us how she's shredding, but I think she said lawnmower. So that's really great. And who else? And Kristen has also been, I really love that Kristen has been um, actually starting her seed right in them. So I'm just wondering if you are not composting them, Kristen, are you just taking your shredded leaves and just instead of using peat moss, starting seeds in the spring? That would be an interesting workshop. I'd love to. Wow. We've been talking about this for years. We have to get together because you don't live that far from me. In fact, I'm on my way to Calgary this week. I hear it's getting warmer. I hear that uh, there's going to be a nice spell, and that's the only reason I'm going. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I go because I'm still helping gardeners with their with their landscape plans. I'm also in the middle of booking a lot of um, seminars right now, so I have a lot of talks that are coming up that are coming up next year. I have one booked for next year, November 2019, but I have several others during the year. So if you've been thinking it would be a great opportunity to have me out and speak, you can just go right to my webpage, which is DonnaBalzer.com and look at that and, and see when I'm available and send me an inquiry. I've got a brand um, sponsor and that is BC Greenhouse Builders and they're willing to pay some of my costs so it doesn't cost you as much as it used to. If you were thinking about having me out, this is a good time to come, a good time to have me out. Anyway, we have... Um, I guess no new questions from that. Oh, yeah, Sean Marie just said she's using her lawnmower, so that's great. So we've run through quite a few questions already. I did see one other thing online. Since we're sort of talking about compost, I'm going to bring this up now. I saw that people are offering their fireplace ash to other people, and they're saying, hey, come and pick it up. I've got all this fireplace ash. You can have it. Now, fireplace ash is very high in potassium, but it also has the effect on soil that it increases the pH. That is your amount of acidity. So if you've been following soils for a while, you know you don't want a really low pH. You don't want a really high pH. You want something right in the middle. So if you've already got a neutral pH and you start to add potassium from wood, uh, burnt wood, you're going to find out that you're going to raise your soil pH. And that might not be what you want to do. Also, I just want to say that biochar, which is cool and interesting and I'm following the whole biochar story love it but it's not the same as wood ash they actually it's actually biochar has been been burnt to a, a specific temperature and then this is a technical term that my husband told me they use a ret retort I think it's called retort so they cut off all the oxygen when they cut off the air you know what happens to a candle when you cut off the air you put a little cap on it the candle goes out and that's what happens when they're making biochar the candle goes out there's no more oxygen they cut off the oxygen and so instead of burning completely down which ash from your fireplace if you're doing a really good job will have burned completely down you're just left with the essentials you've got potash and you've got materials in there that are going to increase your soil ph which you might not want so don't be so ready to accept wood ash. If you do accept wood ash or if you have your own wood ash, I would add it directly to the compost. And I do the same thing with, with wood chips and I do the same thing with leaves that have been chopped up. I add these things to my compost. I don't add them directly onto my garden. Sorry, I said wood chips. What I meant to say was ground up leaves. I like to add them directly to my compost because they'll lower the pH, the wood ash will bring it up and somewhere in between. But my point here is that wood ash is not the same as biochar. They're two completely different things. I've temporarily taken biochar off of my webpage. I normally sell it, but they've changed the packaging. I haven't figured out how I'm going to ship it because it's bigger now. It's 14 liters instead of seven and it's in a plastic container and it, uh, some of them broke. If you've been following along, you know we had a big car accident just a couple weeks ago, and some of them, most of them broke. And so it's quite a brittle plastic, so I don't want people to um, to be worrying about that. I still love it. It's a product I still use, but I just don't have any biochar to sell on my webpage right now. But it is a completely different thing from wood ash. So that was a question that I had seen on online, and I wanted to emphasize, especially for people that are living with a high pH soil. So if you've got a dry soil, I think Betty in Kansas, you probably have a dry soil. I know most of the people in Alberta have dry soils. Usually dry soils are associated with high pH. It's because pH is your percentage of hydrogen 
And when we get lots of rain, like on the West Coast, we get a lot of rain in the winter, that hydrogen splits apart and that increases the amount of free flowing hydrogens. So we get a lower pH. So it's your percentage of hydrogens when you get too much hydrogen. Sorry, that's okay, that's chemistry 101. Don't need to talk about that. Just need to say that if you're saving your wood ash, and I did see some people online talking about wood ash, it is not the same as biochar, and it's not something I would ever, ever, ever just put directly on my garden. It could be a problem for your garden. It would be like taking um, all of those jalapeno peppers that you made and putting them directly in your mouth instead of adding them to your spaghetti sauce first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That is great. So I don't think we have any, uh, any new questions. No, we have Kristen again. She says, we tend to place leaf mold on unplanted beds in the fall to prevent the loss of soil in the spring. It can be a bit messy, but I have to resist the temptation to clean it up. Yeah, you have to. Gardeners have to resist the temptation. There was this generations and probably 10 generations of gardeners that were just too clean and they would rake everything up and that's not good either. Uh, so Kristen is right on the leading edge here after all the leaves will de are decomposed as the season progresses. So again, Kristen is growing in a wet environment, an environment with a lot more hydrogen in the soil in the winter. And by topping up her soils with her, her chopped, just her beds that she's trying to prep for next year, she tops them up with the leaves, the ground up leaves, and that is stopping the runoff of the soil. Otherwise, you can literally get so much soil, you're just left with a gravel pile in the spring or so much rain because with so much rain, it just washes away all the finer particles. So I think that's why Kristen's doing that. And I really appreciate that clarification. I think that's really helpful, um, Kristen. Uh, Natalie has another question. I would like to move our blueberry, but Natalie's busy moving things. Natalie, you can come up here and weed for me. I got lots of fall work to do. <laughs> Natalie wants to move her blueberry bushes as well. They're about 24 inches high, which is 30 centimeters. Can I move them in the fall or should they wait as well? If they are small blueberry bushes, they're only 24 inches tall. That sounds like they're pretty small. I actually find in this wet climate that we have, this West Coast climate, it's better to move them in the fall. What Dr. Shigo, the famous tree biologist, said is that if your plants have at least four to six weeks left where they can root in after you've moved them, then they're going to work. And so on the coast here, our soil does not freeze solid a lot of times. And so we easily have four to six weeks from starting from today, even before the soil will freeze solid. So Natalie, yes, you can go ahead and do that now. You can move those guys. And then maybe you can get out those um, um, little bits of ground up leaves and, and put leaf mulch around them as well as, as, well as bark mulch. I think that'll be... Um, they'll be easy to move. Now on the prairies, it's just the exact opposite when it's a drier location and when you're starting to get into winter and you're not going to have six more weeks of growth, um, then I would not move them now. Of course, they're not growing blueberries, so they don't have to worry about that out there, but they will have lots of time to root in here. And I do find um, that people do actually do better on in on the coast when they're moving things in the fall because then they're already growing come March. You don't have to find a plant and, and get it all wound up in those little pots. You've actually got it growing. So Natalie, yes, I would move them now. The leaves have just turned red or are just turning red. So wait till the leaves drop before you move it. Don't try to, don't disturb the tree mid cycle because they're in the middle of that cycle of taking all their energy they're, they've now changed their leaf color and they're putting their energy into storage in the roots. And so let them finish that job. Give them another week or so and then move those blueberries. Um, so they'll have lots of time to root here on the coast, but I wouldn't do it anywhere else. We're good. Good. Lots of spelling mistakes coming here. I wouldn't do it in a cooler climate. And by that, I'm thinking... Um, I also have a friend that gardens in, in Whitehorse, so she definitely wouldn't be doing it there. So the secret is you need uh, four to six weeks of uh, growing time. The secret is if you have that much time, and I think definitely Natalie has that, is uh, you can go ahead and move those blueberries in about a week when the leaves have all dropped. I know with mine, they just turned bright red, so they're just getting ready to drop. And that four to six weeks of growing time means you've got time for the um, all the organisms that work with your roots to 
get resettled and reorganized. So that, um, okay, that is best. Yeah, finish that question. So I think we are just about out of time. Isn't that crazy? You guys really were helpful to me today. You gave me all these great questions. I had other questions that are not done yet. Like, I didn't finish talking about my squash. I so wanted to talk about my squash because it's so pretty. Let me just quickly move that in. Do you see the squash still has some green on it? It is not fully cured for storage. If I put this squash into the, um, and now the light's a bit bright, but if I put this squash directly into my garage for storage, it would turn into a puddle of mud by the end of winter. But this squash, which came out of, it was just a little bit riper. It has no green stripes in it. It's completely golden. This, this squash is ready to store. And once they've been cured, so this one was picked earlier, the, the darker one, the orange one, this one was just picked. So it's a bit greener. So you need to make sure that you get them into this position where they're, they're cured. And that sometimes can take a couple of weeks. Once they've been cured and they're evenly, um, robustly brown all around, that actually makes them uh, last a little bit longer. So thanks for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I hope we can get together again next Monday. And I especially appreciate our new guests today, our guys that are coming back. But Kristen and Natalie were new this week. So they oh, one more thing. We are on 994 likes, 994 likes. I forgot to mention that. That is incredible. Facebook wants me to have a thousand. Of course, they, they, they have these little increments. If I could get six more likes today, so send it off to your friends if you can or share it with your friends. I would really appreciate it. There's something magic about a thousand. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm willing to play the game. And thanks for joining me. And we will catch up again next week. My web people are putting together some really cool packages for my shop, which will be probably aprons and books or some kind of combination. So have a look at that. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much.